Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is reading passage 3 from R15, test 1, as you can see. Uh, you should spend about 20 minutes on questions 27 to 40, which are based on reading passage 3 below. What is exploration? We are all explorers. Our desire to discover and then share what newfound knowledge is, is part of what makes us human. Indeed, this has played an important part in our success as a species. Long before the first uh, caveman slumped down beside the fire and grunted news that there were plenty of wild beasts over yonder, our ancestors had learned the value of spending out scouts to investigate the unknown. This testing nature of ours undoubtedly helped our species spread around the globe, just as it nowadays no doubt helps the last nomadic Dinan maintain their existence in the depleted forests of Borneo and a visitor negotiate the subways of New York. Over the years, we've come to think of explorers as a peculiar breed, different from the rest of us, different from those of us who are merely well-traveled even, and perhaps there is a type of person more suited to seeking out the new, a type of caveman more inclined to risk venturing out. That, however, doesn't take away from the fact that we all have this inquiring instinct every day and that in all sorts of professions, whether artist, marine biologist or astronomer, borders of the unknown are being tested each day. Thomas Hardy set some of his novels in Agdon Heath, a fictional area of uncultivated land, and used the landscape to suggest the desires and fears of his characters. He is delving into matters we all recognize because they are common to humanity. This is surely an act of exploration and into a world as remote as the author chooses. Explorer and traveler, writer Peter, Peter Fleming talks of the moment when the explorer returns to the existence he has left behind with his loved ones. The traveler who has for weeks or months seen himself only a puny and irrelevant alien crawling laboriously over a country in which he has no roots and no background suddenly and conquers his other self, a relatively solid figure with a place in the minds of certain people. In this book about the exploration of the Earth's surface, I have confirmed myself to those whose travels were real and who also aimed at more than personal discovery, uh, but that still led me with another problem. The world explorer has become associated with a past era. We think back to our golden age as if exploration peaked somehow in the 19th century, as if the process of discovery is now on the decline. Though the truth is that we have named only one and a half million of this planet species, 
and there may be more than 10 million and that's not including bacteria. We have studied only 5% of the species we know. We have scarcely mapped the ocean floors and know even less about ourselves we fully understand the workings of only 10% of our brains. Here is how some of today's explorers define the word Ranfinus, Ranfins, uh, dubbed the greatest living explorer, said, an explorer is someone who has done something that no human has done before, and also done something scientifically useful. Uh, Chris Borington, a leading mountaineer, felt exploration was to be found in the act of physically uh, touching the unknown. You have to have gone somewhere new. Then Robin Hambury, Tennyson, a campaigner on behalf of remote so-called tribal peoples said, a traveler simply records information about some far off world and reports back, but an explorer changes the world. Wilfred uh, Tissiger, uh, who crossed Arabia's empty quarter in 1946 and belongs to an era of unmechanized travel now lost to the rest of us, told me if I had gone across by camera when I could have gone by car, it would have been a stunt. To him, exploration meant bringing back information from a remote place regardless of any great self-discovery. Each definition is slightly different and tends to reflect the field of endeavor of each pioneer. It was the same whoever I asked. The prominent historian, I would say, exploration was a thing of the past, the cutting edge. Scientists would say it was of the present, and so on. They each set their own particular criteria, the common factor in their approach being that they all had, unlike many of us who simply enjoy travel or discovering new things, both are very a definite objective from the outset and also a desire to record their findings. I'd best declare my own bias. As a writer, I am interested in the exploration of ideas. I have done a great many expeditions and each one was unique. I've lived for months alone with isolated ground groups of people all around the world even to uncontacted tribes, but none of these things is of the slightest interest to anyone unless though my books, through my books, I found a new slant, explored a new idea. Why? Because the world has moved on. The time has long passed for the great continental voyages, another walk to the poles, another crossing of the empty quarter. We know how the land surface of our planet lies. Exploration of it is now down to the details. The habits of microbes the same or the grazing behavior of buffalo. Aside from the deep sea and deep underground, it is the era of specialists. However, this is to disregard the role of the human mind has in uh, conveying remote places, and this is what interests me. 
have a fresh interpretation even of a well-traveled route can give its readers new insights. So this was the reading passage. Now questions 27 to 32. Choose the correct letter A, B, C, or D. Okay, this is multiple choice, right? And you see 27, the right to refer to the Western School in New York to illustrate the point that exploration is an intrinsic element of being human. 28, according to the second paragraph, one is the writer's view of explorers. They act on an urge that is common to everyone. The writer refers to a description of Edgar Hath to suggest that Hardy's aim was to investigate people's emotional states. In the fourth paragraph, the writer refers to a golden age to suggest that we are wrong to think that exploration is no longer necessary. In the sixth paragraph, when discussing the definition of exploration, the writer argues that people tend to relate exploration to their own professional interests. In the last paragraph, the writer explains that he is interested in the human ability to cast new light on places that may be familiar. Now questions 33 to 37, look at the following statements, questions 33 to 37, and the list of explorers below. Match each statement with the correct explorer. The statements are here, the explorer, the name of the explorers have been given here. Okay, you will have to match these statements with the relevant explorers. Now we see the first one. It's not about the paragraphs here as they usually say A to E or something. Uh, sometimes they write this to referring to the paragraphs in the passage. But uh, be careful when a box is given, okay? The, your statements may be relevant to the box. Often this in the information in the box are in order rather than the unboxed we see statements or sentences. Uh, we see this. He referred to the relevance of the form of transport used. I see. Uh, Wilfred Tisger. Tisger. Okay. He described the feelings on coming back from after a long journey. Okay. This uh, Peter Fleming. He worked on the benefit of specific groups of people. Robin Hanbury Tennyson. He did not consider learning about oneself an essential part of exploration. Wilfred Tisger. Tisger. He defined exploration as being both unique and valued to others. This is Ran Fiennes, Ran Fiennes. Okay, now question 38 to 40, it's a fill in the blanks, complete the summary below. Choose no more than two words. Okay, remember this. Uh, from the passage from for each answer. Now the writer's own bias, the writer has experience of a large number of unique expeditions and was the first stranger that a certain previously isolated people, that certain previously isolated people hadn't uh, uh, encountered 
Uh, he believes that there is no need for further exploration of Earth's land surface except to answer specific questions such as how buffalo eat. Now, this is the end of this paragraph, and this is what we have to do. And uh, you see, there are many tricks to do all these things, but to me, is the practice that you make your interest in doing all these type of exercises. And uh, the type of test is understanding of the type of test is more important. And this is, to my mind, the easy approach. Okay. It will take time to be very familiar with the type of examination. It will not be overnight, and you need you need to spend time. You should develop your stamina to do one test every day at least. And if you do the two, it's better. In this um, listening and reading, uh, this type of test, you don't need to write much. Just you see one word, two word, or three word, or matching, or multiple choices, A, B, C, D, like this. Uh, hope you uh, you carry on the first. Wish you best of luck. Thank you for spending your time with me. And um, if you have not yet, as a formal request, if you have not yet, subscribe the channel and the bell button as well to get the flash from me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice time. Goodbye.